Hello everyone, welcome back to Simple Learn's YouTube channel. Are you fascinated by data and want to turn it into a fulfilling career? Today, we are going to talk about data science and how you can become a data scientist. Whether you are just starting out or looking to improve your skills, this guide will help you get started on your journey in data science. Firstly, what is data science? In simple terms, data science is a field where you use programming, math and knowledge about a specific area to find useful information in data. Data scientists look at large sets of data to find patterns, trends and connections that can help companies make smart decisions. For example, think about Netflix. Have you noticed how it always seems to know what show or movie you want to watch next? That's because Netflix uses data science. It looks at what you have watched before, what you have liked, and even what time of day you watched. By studying all this information, Netflix can suggest shows and movies it thinks you will enjoy, making it easy for you to find something to watch. And Amazon does something similar when you shop online. When you search for items, buy something, or even just add something to your cart, Amazon keeps track of that. It then uses this data to recommend other products you might like. This helps you discover things you might need and it also helps Amazon sell more products. Now that we have a clear idea of what data science is, let's talk about how you can actually become a data scientist. This might seem like a big task, but don't worry. We'll break it down step by step so you can see exactly what you need to learn and why it's important. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe like and comment below dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions whether you're making a switch or aiming higher simply learn has your back but before that do check out simply learn's professional certificate course in data science offered in collaboration with iit kanpur this comprehensive program features live online classes led by IIT Kanpur faculty and industry experts, hands-on projects, and real-world case studies. You'll master essential data science concepts, including data analysis, machine learning, statistical analysis, and data visualization, while gaining practical experience with tools like Python, R, Tableau, and SQL. You can find the course link in the description box and pin comments. So the first step is to learn programming language. Data scientists often use two main languages, Python and R. Python is very popular because it's easy to learn and has lots of libraries or tools that help with data analysis and machine learning. R is also great especially for statistics and creating graphs. Learning these languages will help you write code to work with data which is a big part of being a data scientist. So once you have chosen your programming language, it's important to start with the basics. Understand these fundamentals will make everything else you learn much easier. So, before you dive into complex stuff, you need to understand the basics of Python. It includes learning about variables, which are like containers that store data, and if-else loops, which are used to make decisions in your code. These basics are like the ABCs of programming, and you'll use them all the time when you start working on data science projects. So, now that you have the basics down, it's time to move on to some tools that will make working with data much easier. Let's talk about NumPy and Pandas. So once you're comfortable with Python basics, it's time to learn about two important libraries, NumPy and Pandas. So NumPy helps you work with numbers, especially if you're dealing with large amounts of data. It's like a super powered calculator. And Pandas is used for handling and organizing data in tables, making it easier to clean, transform and analyze data. So these tools are essential for any data scientist. Now, data science isn't just about coding. It also involves a lot of math. Here's a quick rundown of the key areas you need to focus on. Statistics. For beginners, focus on descriptive statistics, which involves understanding measures of central tendency like mean, median, and mode, as well as measures of spread like variance and standard deviation. You'll also need to grasp the basics of data distribution, such as normal and binomial distributions. And as you move on to intermediate level statistics, you will explore inferential statistics, which involves drawing conclusions from data samples through concepts like sampling, confidence intervals, and hypothesis testing. You'll also need to understand probability distributions such as Poisson and exponential distributions. At the advanced level, delve into regression analysis, learning techniques like linear regression, logistic regression, and multiple regression, which are crucial for making predictions based on data. Additionally, understanding Bayesian statistics will be key, especially concepts like Bayes' theorem, 
parameters and likelihoods which are used in advanced predictive modeling. Next comes linear algebra. So in linear algebra, start by understanding vectors and scalars which are fundamental in representing data. So as you progress, study matrices and matrix operations which are crucial for handling data in multiple dimensions. Finally, at an advanced level, learn about eigenvalues and eigenvectors which are important in many machine learning algorithms such as principal component analysis. Now, calculus is another important area, though you don't need to be an expert in it. Begin by understanding derivatives, which measure how a function changes as its inputs change. This concept is essential when you're optimizing machine learning models. And finally, in probability, start with basic concepts like odds and conditional probability, which will help you understand and manage uncertainty in data. As you advance, explore Bayes' theorem and learn about probability distributions, which are used extensively in statistical modeling and machine learning algorithms. Now, once you have crunched the numbers, the next step is to make your findings easy to understand. That's where data visualization comes in. Now, data visualization is all about presenting your data in a way that's easy for others to understand. So start with Matplotlib, a Python library that allows you to create simple plots like line graphs and scatter plots. This will help you identify trends and patterns in your data. And as you gain confidence, move on to Seaborn, which builds on Matplotlib and allows you to create more complex and aesthetically pleasing visualizations, like heat maps that can show correlations between variables. Additionally, it's important to have a basic understanding of Excel, especially if you'll be working in a business environment. Excel is widely used for quick data analysis and knowing how to create basic charts and pivot tables will make it easier to share your results with colleagues who may not be familiar with Python. Now, to take your data visualizations to the next level, you can learn tools like Power BI and Tableau. Power BI, a tool from Microsoft, allows you to create interactive dashboards that are easy to share and update in real time. This makes it great for businesses that need to monitor key metrics on an ongoing basis. Tableau is another powerful tool for creating interactive and shareable visualizations. So it's particularly useful for working with large data sets and performing complex analytics. So both of these tools are highly valued in the industry for their ability to turn data into actionable insights, making your visualizations even more impactful and useful for decision making. So now that you can analyze and visualize data, it's time to explore one of the most exciting parts of data science, which is machine learning. Machine learning is a powerful tool that allows computers to learn from data and make predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed. Let's break down the different types of machine learning. Number one, supervised learning. So supervised learning is one of the most common types of machine learning. In supervised learning, you train your model on a data set that contains both the input features and the corresponding correct outputs. So this means the data you use to train your model is labeled. And the goal is to teach the model to make predictions based on these labels. For instance, you might model that predicts house prices based on features like the number of bedrooms, location, and size of the house. So popular algorithms in supervised learning include linear regression for predicting continuous values and classification algorithms like logistic regression, decision trees, and support vector machines for categorizing data into classes. Next up is unsupervised learning. Now, unlike supervised learning, with data that doesn't have labels. So the goal here is to find the patterns or structures within the data. So for example, you might use unsupervised learning to group customers into different segments based on their purchasing behavior without knowing beforehand what those segments should be. So clustering algorithms like k-means and hierarchical clustering are commonly used in unsupervised learning to identify these groupings. Additionally, you will use techniques like principal component analysis to reduce the dimensionality of your data while preserving its important features. Next comes semi-supervised learning. So semi-supervised learning combines elements of both supervised and unsupervised learning. So in semi-supervised learning, you work with a data set that is partially labeled. This approach is useful when labeling data is expensive or time consuming. The model learns from the labeled portion of the data and makes predictions on the unlabeled portion. So this technique can be very effective in scenarios where you have a small amount of labeled data and a large amount of unlabeled data, such as in text classification or image recognition tasks. Now, finally, let's talk about reinforcement learning. In this type of learning, an agent, which can be a computer program or robot, learns by trying things out and getting feedback. So the agent makes decisions and based on whether those decisions are good or bad, 
it gets rewards or penalties. So the goal is to figure out which actions lead to the best outcomes over time. Now with a good grasp of programming, math and machine learning under your belt, there's one more essential skill you need to master, working with databases. So let's talk about SQL. So SQL, which stands for Structured Query Language, is a standard language for managing and querying relational databases. It's crucial for extracting and manipulating data from large databases. Start by learning the basics like how to write simple queries to select, insert, update, and delete data. Understanding how to join tables is also important, as it allows you to combine data from different sources into a single query. As you advance, explore more complex SQL features like subqueries, transactions, and indexing which helps improve the efficiency and performance of your database queries. The Mastering SQL will enable you to handle data extractions and manipulation tasks more effectively, making you a more versatile data scientist. So now that you have got a solid foundation, it's time to put your skills into practice. So Kaggle is a fantastic platform to start applying what you have learned. It's a popular website where data scientists and machine learning enthusiasts can join competitions and work with real data. It's a fantastic way to get hands-on experience and build a portfolio. So you can start by exploring the datasets on Kaggle and try solving some easy problems to get used to working with data. You can also join competitions to test your skills and see how you compare to others. So doing projects on Kaggle helps you practice what you have learned and gives you results you can show to future employees. So there you have it, a step-by-step -step guide on how to become a data scientist. Remember, it takes time and effort, but with dedication, you can definitely make it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and keep learning. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.